Evans for 7-Eleven. And now I turn it over to my play-by-play -play partner, Hawk Harrelson. Hi, Stone Pony. Thank you very much. And once again, good evening, everyone, and welcome to White Sox Baseball right here on Comcast Sportsnet. First of this three-game set and the first of this six-game homestand. And as we wait for that clock, we are now ready for action as Denard Spann will lead it off. Denard hitting at 288, a couple of homers. He's driven in 20. Minnesota comes in at 18 and 21. As he fakes the bunt, takes a strike. Josh Fields in on the grass at third. Twins hitting at 272 as a club. And they have a 5.20 team ERA. Very unlike Minnesota. That's off the plate. One and one in the count. Normally, Span doesn't try to do too much. He'll slap at the ball if you keep it away. He'll hit it to left or left center. You try to get inside, he'll pull it. Slaps it right by. Josh Fields, who, as I mentioned, was in on the grass as Pods quickly gets to it. He was playing in nicely. So that's just a single. Normally, you'd think anything on that side of Josh with Span running would be a double. Well, that's the advantage of at least showing bunt. That means you're going to pull the guy in at the corner. When you do that, there's no angle for ground balls. Normally, that's hit right at the third baseman, and it's an easy 5-3. This turns into a base hit. It'll bring up the 28-year-old. All purpose player, Brendan Harris. Hitting at 296, a couple of homers, he's driven in seven. So good speed aboard. He is nine for 11 in stolen bases. Minnesota, 25 for 34. As that is popped up for the easy out. Very rarely will you see anybody on the Twins do something like that. Harris is playing because Matt Tolbert, who normally has been playing second base, taking a rest. Harris pops it up, and that's an easy out. That'll bring up Joe Maurer. We did not see him in that first three-game set back in the opening week of the season. We didn't miss him. He's something. I'll tell you what. He is some kind of magnificent baseball machine. Mauer hitting at 417, six homers, 17 driven in. Talked to Ron Gardner before the game, and he said that before Mauer got back, they were doing a whole lot of running on them because Redmond's arm was bothering him also, and there was no Mauer. Lately, it hasn't been the case. Well, they were just swept in that four game wraparound series in New York as we were in Toronto. But I think the difference being is that. They played four good games. They had three walk-offs in the same series. Very rarely will you see that in the same month, let alone the same series. I've never seen it. I know that. A little bit high, I guess. Jeff Kellogg thought this one was up. It's a cutter, and you see A.J. try to yank it back in the zone. Normally, you don't get that pitch. Change the stance just a little bit. And the count one and two. He's had trouble with Burley. Four for 22, no homers. And he's knocked in three runs. Well, I think he's changed his stance, Hawk, because I think he's become more power conscious. I mean, he's led the league twice in hitting. He knows he can do that. I think Minnesota wants him to hit a few more balls out of the ballpark, and with that in mind, especially in the early going, he's done that. That may be the reason. And might be because of some sort of back problem as he gone that uh, he has suffered. A lot of times guys who have had oblique problems, back problems will change their stance. Wherever he hits from, he's going to hit. He's going to hit except for that pitch. That was over the outside corner and Jeff Kellogg rung him up. Now this is a little diff different. This guy is another outstanding player. These two might be the best one two punch in baseball. Well, hitting back to back the middle of that lineup, that's a lot of run batted in opportunities. And they just missed Span at first base. So, one of the things you can't do is take liberties with Mark Burley. He's got just a tremendous move. Span is one of their base stealers, but Burley neutralizes that most of the time.
Breaking ball. Getz sucks it up, throws it out, and it'll retire the side. So the leadoff single by Denard Span goes for naught. After happening a play, it's the Twinkies nothing, and the good guys coming to bat. Three with Toby Canerco and Krasinski. Brian Anderson recently recalled from the minor leagues along with Getz and Ramirez. The Lowe's defensive setup behind Baker, left to right, Span, Gomez, and Kadire in the infield, Creedy, Punto, Harris, and Morneau. With Redmond behind the plate. And the U.S. Cellular starting pitcher is Scott Baker. He's one and four, his ERA a tick under seven. He does, however, have almost a five to one strikeout to walk ratio. And before we show you our picks to click you at home select yours as Pods takes ball one downstairs. Pods hitting at 271. Three for four with a homer lifetime off Baker. As that pitch is up high. Sox come in at 15 and 22 hitting at 246 as a club with a 4.76 ERA. One thing to bear in mind Minnesota has been abysmal on the road. They're just four and twelve away from that friendly dome of theirs. There's a strike. Well, you know, one of the big questions that everybody for the last year and a half now has been saying was, well, be interesting to see how the twins play in that new open air ballpark. And that is into left field. Span makes the catch and it's out number one. Well, you know, and they say it in a, in a negative way, divisive way that leads people to believe that well they won't be as good. Well I, I can't I don't see it that way at all. This organization has been one that has made as many adjustments, fine tunes here and tweaks there as any organization in baseball over the years. And I don't think it's going to change. I think they will make the adjustments. Well, I think they're going to have to add some power to a lineup that's pretty good anyway, but they can't just depend on speed. Well if if it goes that way then then what you and I have talked about in the past is is a little askew. As there's a strike to Josh and the count 0 and 2 because of the fact I think the game is going back more to speed. But I think Hawk what what happens when you play in that dome I think you can get away with pitchers who aren't quite as good on a daily basis. Well that is we'll see I, I, I disagree I think that in that dome they have a definite advantage which they certainly have had over us because they could go from first to third we couldn't they could score from second and, and I, I think now with a lack of power coming back into baseball because of the steroid issue that speed is going to be a dominant factor coming up and if they do add more speed you know yourself if you get decent pitching if you get decent pitching, and Minnesota's had decent pitching over the years because they throw strike one and they've always had a good bullpen. That is not the case this year. Here's the 2 2. I think Minnesota over the years, and, and you can check it back, I think they've had the biggest home field advantage there is. And I think their pitchers, I think it varies greatly between their ERA at home in that dome 
where they've got usually three outfielders that can just go get everything that stays in the park. <laughs> then when you put them on the road, they're not quite the same. That ball hit hard, but the one hopper, Punto. No, this outfield that they have right now that we're looking at was span and left. And Delman Young, of course, Steve, you informed me early before the game that he had death in his family, his mom. Mom passed away, so he won't be here for this series, but their normal outfield is one that if it stays in the park, it's not going to drop between them. No, that guy in center field can make a huge difference in any pitching staff. I haven't seen him play this deep walk against anybody. He's way back there. There's a strike to Jermaine. Normally Gomez is playing a fairly shallow center field, but not tonight. Well, they have played us, giving us the gaps. They did it last year, and they did it the first three games of this season. Young was in left, and you had Gomez in center, and you had Denard span in right, and they gave us the gaps. They certainly do it in their ballpark. Yes. But again, with that speed that they have out there, is that foul back? You know, it's like not unlike having three or four 20 game winners on your staff. You can you can play the game any way you want to. It's not unlike, you know, when Oakland had uh, Mulder, Zito and Hudson, they can play the game any way they wanted to. When you get that speed, you can do it. Is that got a good pitch to hit right there. And fouls it back. I think it's kind of interesting because. As the count has moved in Baker's favor. Gomez has moved. A little bit toward right center. That would lead you to believe that Baker, who does have pinpoint control, in fact, talking with Bert Blylevin, their broadcaster, and a guy who should be a Hall of Famer, he said Baker's best attribute is his ability to move that fastball in and out at will. That's hit right at him, just a couple of steps to his right as he had moved over a couple of steps to his left. And that's a 1 2 3 inning. After one, no score. Warning track, fan deck, or individual game diamond suites available. Book a group outing or party area today. Call 312 674 1000 or visit whitesox.com. It'll be Creedy, Kadire, and Redmond here in the top of the second inning. Joe takes first pitch strike. He's hitting at 223, five homers, one of those coming back on April 10th against us. And if you miss that April 10th game, poof, Jose Contreras on the bump. The 0-2 pitch, just off the corner. 
Talked to Joe before the game today. He missed a couple of games with a stiff back, but he said he felt 100%. That is foul. Back to our right. A beautiful evening here in the beautiful city. This was as gorgeous a day as I've seen in a long time. You're happy, aren't you? Oh, I'm ecstatic. <laughs> this was terrific. You got a smile like a five year old. 84, 84 <laughs> degrees. The one two. And him off balance out in front. And Brian Anderson, it's good to see BA back. Mark Burley throws a great straight change. It's really the key to his entire performance. You see both the foot and the hands come forward, and Creedy couldn't get anything into the swing. And for Mark Burley, release point and arm velocity is the same on the fastball as it is on the change. How about that performance of Clayton Richard yesterday? I thought he was as good as he could possibly be. You stay right there, and you're going to win a lot of games in this or any other league. And you know, it's probably the fewest change-ups we have seen him throw in any of his outings. I think he had supreme confidence in his fastball. He just moved it around and did just a great job. Denier can't get it. And the count one and two. Yeah, if you missed that game yesterday, Clayton Richard. Seven innings, giving up two runs, just one earned. Three hits, had three strikeouts. Nice. Can he get it from his knees? No. Good try. Judge Fields got a face full of the infield as he dove to his left. Take another look at it. This is a pretty good stop. Got it across, but not quite in time as Kadir beats it out. Nice effort by Josh Fields. It'll bring up the catcher, Mike Redmond, hitting a 250. But he is 14 for 30 lifetime off Burley. And the majority of those hits into right, right center, and a few into left center. We swung a magic wand against Burley. And that's one of the reasons why he's in there. In fact, talking with Ron Gardner, he said that they called up a third catcher so that they could occasionally. Use Redmond behind the plate. Use Maurer as a DH and take a little pressure off his legs and back. Close pitch didn't get it. AJ wants it inside. And Mark throws it a good six inches off the plate. Alfield shading him to the right. One out. Kadir is a good base runner. He's a smart base runner. He's the kind of base runner that if you give it to him, he'll take it. He's four for five in stolen bases. This team is 25 and nine Guys, in the stolen going? base category. That pitch was high and wide, two and one. First of a three game set. First of a six game homestand. Make your plans to be with us the rest of this week here at beautiful U.S. Cellular Field. Tomorrow night, Johnny Danks against Francisco Liriano, 25 year old Southpaw. That's looped out in the right field. Nice pitch by Burley. Had him off balance. And there's out number two. That's what Redmond does a whole lot of, but fortunately, Jermaine was playing him in a good spot. Apparently, Redmond not particularly happy with that at bat as he raced down the tunnel. Here's a guy you always have to watch the bunt. And make no mistake about it. He got some pop too. So you have to be on your toes. He has one home run off Burley. He's six for 13 against Mark. Just a ton of talent right here. He's an outstanding outfielder has outstanding an outstanding arm as that ball hit in the center field. Ryan is there and that'll retire the side. We have completed an inning and a half with no score.
wife, Aristea. We just arrived up from Orlando, be here for the summer. It's nice that she waited till it was 84 degrees today. She's, front, she's just like you. She, she's a front runner. <laughs> Notice she. she what, what, no, that's just smart, isn't it? Watch the temperatures closely before she made the trip. The old saying, Stoney, show me a front runner, and I'll show you a winner. That's exactly right. Jim Tomey takes first pitch strike. Tomey at 247 homers, he's knocked in 20. Three for 17 against Baker. Baker's going to change speeds. He has both a curve and a slider, although you'd be hard pressed to pick one or the other as a dominant pitch. Well, Baker, left handers against him hitting at 224. Right handers are hitting at 329. He started off, it's been very difficult for him, and he hasn't been able to shake the big inning. He'll be sailing along, all of a sudden get in trouble, and then he can't turn off the opposition. Count hangs at one and two. Like a couple of starts ago, he had a no hitter through six innings and wound up giving up five runs. So when he gets in trouble, he's had a hard time getting out of it, and hopefully the Sox can put him in trouble early in this one. They want to go in. As we talked about, right handers with a slider, good slider, or a curveball they can control down and in. That's where they want to go with Tommy. And then, of course, you got the high fastball. Jimmy sitting on 548 home runs. And there's a base hit. That's through the ship. Host a private party on the U.S. Cellular Field fan deck in center field. Package includes 150 game tickets, access to the fan deck for the whole game, and an all-inclusive food and drink package for the first 90 minutes of the game. Reserve the fan deck today. Call 312-674-1000 or visit WhiteSox.com for more details. Here's Polly. Paulie hitting in 316. Four homers, he's driven in 23. Five for 17 lifetime off Baker, and of the five hits, three of them have stayed in the park. That's low and away. Field. They are spread out and deep. In Minnesota before the game was talking about the loss of one of their pitchers. Glenn Perkins got hurt, so they're going to have to make a switch this weekend. It hasn't been announced yet, but I talked with Ron Gardner. He said Perkins won't be available for a while, so they're still evaluating just exactly what it is and how long it's going to be. And the 2 0 pitch. That ball hit deep. Fan just looks up. You can put it on the ball. Yes. Mercy. Probably getting a little respect right there from Denard's fan. Well, there's no reason to take a step back when you realize that it's 100 feet over your head. And he hit every bit of that. We told you that Baker doesn't throw sinkers, and it's the Ford home run replay as we look at number five. This ball on the outer third, and Paul just crushes it. He knows it's going to the left of the bat. Stan just walks, takes the foul. Look at how far it's going up. And as far as Baker is concerned, he's just going to ask for another baseball. There's a strike. And on a more somber note. Our heartfelt wishes and condolences go out to the family and friends of a longtime member of the White Sox family who passed away this morning, Danny Castle. 
He was a good man. He was respected and liked by everyone. And at the tender age of 45, and Maria, my thoughts are with you. Danny Castle, great guy. That's out of play left side. AJ hitting at 266, four homers. He's driven in 10. Yeah, it's got a piece of a good pitch by Baker. It's a good job of staying alive by AJ is that straight change was diving away. Normally, this one gets you out because it's well off the plate. And AJ didn't put it in play, just able to spoil it. And there's another souvenir. Down hangs it, nothing in two. Brian Anderson on deck. Oh, that ball was crushed by Paul. That ball was crushed right back through the middle. And right now, let's check out our Heineken picks to click tonight. Our Hall of Fame director, Jim Anjo, and the crew. Mike Leary back in his seat tonight as well. They went with A.J., who just singled. Steve, Lisa. And the three-legged Greyhound. Yeah, Tex wanted Canerco. He called me before the game and, and he said, uh, you know, I, I really like Paulie tonight. He looks look good to me, looks solid. So, yeah, that's, that's we're, we're a divided family in that respect. And Gianna Francesca Casson and I are going to go with Brian Anderson, who's at the plate right now. Rick Anderson just came out to talk with Scott Baker, probably trying to settle him down because they realize more than anybody that big inning situation that Baker has experienced where when they start hitting him, he has a hard time shutting them off. So let's see if that continues here tonight. Brian hitting at 288. He was hitting at 273 down at Charlotte and just 22 at bats. Takes a breaking ball strike. Chris gets on deck. AJ did a great job of staying alive, spoiling two very good pitches before he got one out over the plate and took it right back up the middle. Now feel there straight up now. And that pitch is high and in. One and one the count to Brian. If you did not hear, Brent Lillybridge was optioned out to Charlotte. Pretty good rip just underneath it. Took his head off just enough. And here's the roster move. That's the reason why Brian Anderson was able to play. He had an oblique problem, but he came back nicely and Brent Lillibridge is going to go down and contemplate what it's going to take for him to get back here, how he can play a top of the order type hitter's game. Guy that can use his speed instead of hitting fly balls, hitting the ball on the ground because he's got great speed. Almost took one for the club right there. Two balls, two strikes. Baker, 27 years old, 6'4, 220 pounds out of Shreveport, Louisiana. I played down there in the Texas League. He was in the Texas League in those days. That was one humid place. They got some big bugs down there, too. <laughs> Boy. That ball hammered foul. 
Shreveport Sports. It was uh, an interesting place. Boy, it is so good. Nice crowd on the end. It is so good. To be back here in some great weather. And the 2-2, two -two, that's fouled away right side. I can only assume that we had a real good walk-up crowd tonight because this is an absolutely perfect night to come watch baseball. And although the team isn't doing close to what they will be able to do, a home crowd bring out the best in them. There's the mayor's here showing his support. Well, this is a good ball club. This just played bad. That's all. And that pitch foul back. And as I said earlier, I said it yesterday, and I'll say it again. I still think this club is going to win this division. And I'll tell you why. Because it's gotten down to a battle of bullpens. And for a team that's got the best bullpen the last two months of the se season, that's who's going to win the American League Central. And for the team who's got the best bullpen for the last two months of the season in the National League Central, that's who's going to win that pen, that division, and every division. There's a shot right to Creedy. Boy, that ball, that's a hang with him for Brian. That's too bad. He hit that ball right on the butt. And Creedy was well off the line. Low fastball just scalded. it. But Joe right there and almost turns it into a double play. Good pick by Borneau at first base. But fortunately, A.J. is back. And of course, my statement right there takes into consideration we have to play a little better than we did. That ball gets away from Redmond, so A.J. Mosey's on in the second. I don't know if he got crossed up or what. Well, that's going to be a wild pitch. That's the second wild pitch. And he was setting up low and away, but that looked like a catchable ball. Yeah, it did. That should be a pass ball. Well, we'll see what Bob Rosenberg does. He's flipping the coin right now. That's cold. That's cold. <laughs> He hasn't announced anything yet. Now, almost another one. Well, when you're setting up low and away, and he throws it high and tight. But and it looks like it was catchable. Right. But Rosie gave him a wild pitch. He'll get the next one right. Chris hitting at 238. No homers. He's driven in six. Outfield about equidistant, slightly to the left. And that is chopped just foul. Fortunately for Getz. Throw the count two and one. I think Chris, now that he's hitting down in the order, is probably going to do a little bit better. I think he felt some unnecessary pressure being a young player, one, two, hitting up in the top of the order where perhaps he wasn't near as comfortable because he's got a good solid bat, he's got a good swing, and there's no reason why he shouldn't be hitting here. He is not and has not since he's been here when he started. Afraid to put youngsters in pressure positions, pressure situations, and in pressure one hole, two hole, three hole, whatever it may be. Now, he doesn't do the three hole too much, but the instant he sees that they're having a little trouble, then he will make the change. And there's another factor in that walk. He took some close pitches, and that's usually the sign of a guy that's seeing the ball well. So when you do that, and it's still going to be a walk one way or the other, but later on that will lead to more selectivity, swinging at better pitches, and that's the same thing as Alexi Ramirez. If he can get to the point where he's swinging at better pitches, swinging at strikes, you'll see that batting average rise dramatically. 
Well, Lexi's in a spot right now. We mentioned he's been in between. He's got to let that strike zone come back to him. If he tries to go out and get it, then he's going to be in that slump long. You've got to let that strike zone come back to you. Is there? Is a breaking ball. Or Redmond just hesitated for a second. And the count one and zero. Oh. Gomez and Kadir have phenomenal arms in center and right. Span's arm is pretty decent, pretty accurate in the left, but he doesn't have the arm strength of Gomez or Kadir. Not too many guys do. Those oh. guys, as you mentioned, they have outstanding throwing arms. And when Delman Young is in the outfield, he's got an overpowering arm. Well, those are the when he's in the outfield, those are that's the best throwing outfield in this league. I don't know about the national league, but in this league it is. There's a young man who has all the skills you'd want. This has yet to put it all together, but he will. Well, he's just 23 years old. That ball hit high. And it's going to be foul. It's 31 pitches this inning for Scott Baker. That does not a long outing make. And their bullpen has not been the best of bullpens as we have known Minnesota's bullpens over the years. One of the guys they really miss, I mean, they let Dennis Reyes go, and he was very good for them. And I'm kind of surprised because it's not like he was making overwhelming money. He was great against us, I know that. So he's real good against just about everybody. Two on, one out, the one-two pitch. He got a good pitch to hit right there. He couldn't do anything with it. Lex has got a smile on his face because he knows that he got a hanger. But as Hawk said, when you go out to get it and don't let it come to you, even those hanging curveballs sometimes you just don't hit. How long has it been since you've heard that old adage in baseball? That ball hit hard. Nobody's going to get that one. Kadir quickly gets over, backhands it, makes a nice play. AJ's going to score. That ball is cut off on a double by Ramirez, and the Sox lead it 3 nothing. with Ducks on the ponds and one out. RBI number 14, and that fastball is right down the middle. So after hanging a curveball, Baker went to the fastball, but threw it in a real hittable spot. And Alexi drives in run number 14. Nice play by Kadire, but not much he could do with it. And so with a base hit by Tomey, all of a sudden, the scouting report held true. Baker cannot turn off the sides. Here's Pods. Went out to the edge of the track in left field. Infield in. Outfield still. Spread out and deep as he turns it loose and underneath it. But that old adage in baseball, when you're in trouble, hitting coaches used to invariably tell you, son, remember one thing pop and glide, pop and glide. You see the ball before you strive. That's, that's what you should do. <laughs> which which, which yeah. coach has told you that? Everyone I ever had. <laughs> hey, let's put it this way they certainly had the opportunity to. <laughs> Watch out. And of course, by that, that means don't stride until you see the ball. You just stay in motion, stay in motion, and don't stride until you see the ball released. Big pitch right here in this scenario. Touch on the pond and the 1 1. And the advantage goes to Baker. Greg Walker has to like what he's seen so far and started with the middle of the order. And the lone out made this inning was by Brian Anderson and he hit a rocket right at Joe Creedy. Gap out there in right center. 
And he got that breaking ball. And I, I, think, Red, I think Redmond's going, wait a second. Let's make a deal. If I call it, you throw it because I'm standing up and I'm looking for something that you're not throwing. This is not good. <laughs> well, the only thing you can tell, hey, I'm not calling for a hanging curveball. <laughs> that's, that's the uh, 37th pitch of the inning. You see me go up, you know it's a fastball. Yeah, I think he was he was standing up to get the fastball, and then, whoa. Got that one down a little bit. So this could be a real big at bat in the scheme of things in this ball game right here. Josh Fields on deck. Tonight this is a very lively ballpark. We saw it in batting practice. Maybe one of the reasons why the outfielders for the Twins are playing so deep with everybody up. A big strikeout for Baker. He had some pitches to hit right there, just couldn't do it. That ball just dives down and in. He had some hittable fastballs. Pitches to hit in the air, he just followed them back. And that hanging curveball. So here's Josh. He grounded out to short. Hit the ball pretty hard. Didn't kill it. Come on. Josh checks it up. There's a pitch up in Toronto. He just couldn't lay off of. Two on, two out. Jermaine die on deck. So Josh should be getting something decent to hit in this sequence somewhere. There it was. Got a fastball right down the middle, and that's been one of the things that's plagued Josh as he's gotten some hittable pitches. But when he gets the mistake, he fouls it back. That's a sign of a guy that is in a protracted slump. It's just that last split second that you take your head off the ball. Another high breaking ball. Boy, he's all over the place with that release point. Well, you can understand why the ERA is a touch below seven and it's a one and four record. Slowey has been their ace. He's five and one this year, along with Mark Burley, who's been our ace at five and one. Another fastball. A lot of twos up on that board. Boy, it's hard to hit it if you can't see it. And the thing about it is, is that Josh will go out to third base and say, how did I miss those pistols? Sox come up with three. Strand two, and they lead it three nothing.
pitch to Nick Punto taken for a strike. Punto hitting at 196. That's characteristic of him. 10 for 35 lifetime though off Burley. That's foul back. Last year Punto hit 284. And he played in 99 games, so he didn't play all the time, but when he played, he played very effectively. And this year he just hasn't been able to get anything going for him. You see lifetime against Mark Burley, he's done a nice job. Well, they won a divisional title one year with Nick Punto, the everyday third baseman. He can pick it. Oh, he's good for a ball. He is good for a ball. He's one of those piranhas that Ozzy made famous. There's another one of those little piranhas is down at Tropicana Field, hitting about 370 going into yesterday's game. Well, that's a guy they traded away in one deal that it's hard for me to understand, along with Matt Garza, with Jason Bartlett, who is hitting everything in sight. Plus, they point to him as a glue for that infield, and that's a terrific infield. And we understand he's hitting 384 coming into today's game. Not bad. <laughs> Puto, got to hurry. Yeah, good play. And Nick loves to go in head first at first base. And folks, if you have a son or daughter who plays this game, don't let him do this. That's stupid. You can only get hurt, and you don't get there as quickly. It makes no sense. Zero cents. So here's Denard Span. He single past Josh Fields. Now fakes that butt. And that's what he did on the first pitch. Leading off the ball game and hit the second pitch right by Fields. Takes a strike. I mentioned Johnny Danks against Francisco Liriano. A couple of left handers out on that bump. Tomorrow night in game two. Big hack at a hook. And then on Thursday, Bartolo Colon against Nick Blackburn, 27 year old right hander. So make your plans to be with us here at the ballpark. As again, just a nice crowd here this evening. I remember Nick Blackburn as a man who started game 163 and threw a tremendous ball game. Yeah, he, he lost it, made a mistake to Jim Tomey, but he threw great. Burley. That'll be an infield hit for Span. And I know exactly what happened with Mark Burley. He thought that ball was hit harder than it was. It happens sometimes to pitchers. You get set to get the ball, and it's not quite there yet. Mark's a tremendous fielder. But he put his glove down actually too soon. And when the ball is slowly hit, it's bounced off his leg. That'll bring up Brendan Harris. He's 0 for 1. He tried to bunt and popped up to AJ. So once again, good speed aboard. He has a decent lead. As Harris takes strike one. This guy has hit the ball well against us when he was down at Tampa Bay and since he's been in a Minnesota uniform. And he is also hitting to a lot of tough luck against us. He's been very much like a Nick Punto type player before Nick became a starter and that is he can play third short and second and he gives Ron Gardner a lot of flexibility and that's what managers really look for everybody wants to have that guy who's going to start every day and give you that great outing each and every day but in the major leagues on a good team a great utility player is worth his weight in gold, especially if he can play shortstop. Oh, yeah. Nice little pick right there by Gibson. The spin by Alexei Rackham up. 
And this inning is over. We'll go to the bottom of the third. It is still 3-0 good guys. What a terrific double play. Watch Ramirez spin, get the ball there in plenty of time, and that's how the third inning ended. Yeah, that ball took a bit of a funny hop on Chris right there, and he made it look easy. As he's getting a little love right there from Clayton Richard. As we get set to go to the bottom of the third, 3 4 and 0 oh for our guys, 0 oh, 3 and 0 oh for their guys. It'll be interesting to see how Baker throws this inning because Rick Anderson, the pitching coach, had not the friendliest conversation I've ever seen with him between innings. Jermaine went out to Gomez in center. That's off the corner. One and one to count. Baker's hung a lot of breaking balls tonight, and so far they haven't come back to haunt him. But if he continues to do it, they will. Yeah, one or two of them will. Pretty good pitch right there with the fastball on the outside corner. Well, I don't I don't blame Rick Anderson in that conversation that he had with him because of the fact, you know, here's a guy, an experienced major league pitcher and a good one. And to make that many mistakes in one inning. He was lucky to get out of that with just three. You better believe it. That ball looped down the center field. Gomez can get there with that speed. I'll tell you, he is fun to watch. You know, a lot of people last year were criticizing Carlos Gomez because of they thought he was showboating a lot. That's not showboating. That's just the way this young guy plays. He plays with a lot of enthusiasm. He plays with a lot of effort and fun. I love to watch him play. Well, he can go get him. And whether it's coming in, going back, or side to side, by the way, he's also playing in some pain right now because he got hurt when he made that tumble. Cannot check it up. Tommy started off that three run second with a base hit through the shift. They have a modified shift on Tommy as compared to other teams. And the count two and one. Usually when you see a pitching coach and you've been there. Stevie, you know. But usually when you see a pitching coach. All these guys, all these pitchers. You've got now and nowadays for the most part 12 pitchers on your staff. And they all have 12 different personalities. 
And usually when you see a pitcher jump, jump on a guy like Anderson did with Scott Baker right there, that's an indication that Baker's a pretty tough guy because they don't jump on weak guys. Those are the kind of guys as there's ball four. So Tommy is aboard. Well, tomorrow night is Latino College Night presented by the University of Phoenix. For tickets to see the White Sox play at US Cellular Field, call 866 Sox Game or visit White Sox. Dot com. I think one of the reasons why Rick Anderson jumped on Baker was last year Baker was a terrific pitcher for them. He was 11 and 4, his ERA in the mid threes. And this year, for whatever reason, maybe it's just a lack of confidence or he started off slowly, whatever it is, Rick Anderson knows that Scott Baker is a better pitcher than what he's shown to this point. That ball, little high neck in, and the count one and zero. Oh. Paulie, Paulie just crushed one. If you're just tuning in, last inning. If you missed it, poof. We got a fastball that just kept on going, and it is a very lively park tonight. Yeah. On evening like this, this is a real small ballpark. Especially when you don't throw ground balls. And Baker is one of those guys that doesn't have any sinking action on his fastball. And although he's got normally terrific control, he's walked two tonight. But most everything the Sox have hit has been in the air. Checks it up. And the count three and nothing. Will probably stand second in the all time. Franchise list behind big Frank Thomas and extra base hits. Balling now with 589. You have to give him the 3 0 green light here, I would assume. If he wants it. And that's up high, not even close. So back to back walks, and that'll bring up AJ. And something to bear in mind Baker came in with just six walks for the season. That was in six starts. He already has walked three. Now you said it up front. And you alluded to it in the opening. That he was having trouble staying away from the big inning. And once once the opposition starts to get to him. If you're not a sinker baller if you can't get that ground ball normally. It becomes fairly difficult for you. Well, not that three runs is a big inning, but that could have been a four, five, or a six run inning right there. As that's shanked. Left side. AJ just rifled one back through the middle. Almost took Baker off the mound and came around to score. Now feel really spread out. And that is popped up. Infield fly rule is called two down. So it's up to Brian Anderson who is 0 for 1. Last inning. And in his first at bat since being recalled from his rehab in Charlotte. He just hit a screaming meme. Right at Joe Creedy. There's Joe. He'll always have a lot of fans in this city. And there's first ball, breaking ball, strike. Same thing he got. Over to him last time. Well, that was a little better one. At this inning, he hasn't hung near as many breaking balls as he did last inning. He still hasn't hit his spots. Brady backhands it, goes to the bag, steps on it. Ball hit pretty well right there, but meanwhile we get a couple of walks. Can't do anything with it.
Affleck trivia question. Who are the three players in Twins history that have won multiple batting titles? Well, we already told you one of them. He's at the plate right now. And he takes a strike. He struck out. His first trip. This guy right here is some kind of athlete. Breaking ball, big sweeper, and the count 0 and 2. Well, he's had a few injuries, and he's still a relatively young man. And ideally, what they probably would like to do is to move him to first, but they've got more no at first base, and he's not going anywhere. So there's not much you can do with Joe Maurer, who happens to be a terrific catcher. That. Yeah, good pitch didn't get it, but also in this situation with Maurer, it wouldn't surprise me. You could put him third, you could put him in the outfield. This guy is just a, an unreal athlete. That ball went across the plate of strike. Sure did. I know one thing, and I really like the guy, Johnny Bench. If you could put Johnny Bench at third base, you could definitely put Joe Maurer at third base. Well, Johnny did it the same way they would do it eventually for Maurer. That is just to protect him. Well, you protect him first and foremost physically, yeah. but also you can protect him offensively because when you're catching every day, you get to August and September, a lot of those fastballs that you get as you go. Two strikeouts for Burley, both of them Joe Maurer. But when you get to August and September, a lot of those guys have been catching all the time. Those fastballs, they get right down the middle. They swing and foul back. If they're playing another position or DH, they don't foul them back. They hit them hard. The big difference to this point is that Maurer's home is a dome, and so he doesn't get quite as worn out as some of the other guys. The guy that was amazing to me is Pudge Rodriguez. With all the games he caught, and it was as hot as you'd want it ever to be in Texas. And he kept on swinging the bat. Well, that ball hit high and deep. Jermaine, stay in here. Jermaine right in front of the patio. The Bertucci boy area makes the catch. I think Maurer, I'm more no thought he got it. That well, I thought he got it. And it could very well be that the wind is blowing and swirling out toward left and left center. But the wind knocked that ball down because Morneau got most of this. He got it partially off the end of the bat, but this is a real strong guy. And he's looking at this like he thought this was about 15 rows back. But as Jermaine coasts right in front of where the Bartucci's are frying their chicken and grilling their ribs. Grady can't get the high fastball. Joe 0 for 1 went out to Brian Anderson in center. But you can also, I'll tell you what, that's the reason, first, first of all, as I said, physically is where you protect them. That went right next door. I'd have, to, I'd have had that. You would have sucked that oh, up. Turn two on thing. it, man. Are you kidding? All state and two states. State of confusion and what else? <laughs> state of allergies. <laughs> Allergic to leather. <laughs> One and two. Couple of good friends. Good friends going at one another right here. Cues it off the end of the bat, and that's going to be a base hit. And Joe's just going, let's see. Look at Mark. Not yet. Said, so, buddy, I hit it just like you threw it. Well, the first time he got him on a straight change. Joe put it in play, but hit it right at Brian Anderson. This time on a similar change, Joe pulls off the ball, but catches it off the end of the bat and just cues it into right field. Kadire had an infield single.
2 and 0. Kadir's a good crip hitter. Last year he was hurt a good portion of the oh, year. Yeah. But normally has tremendous power. That's a fair ball. Knocked down nicely by Pauly, just like you're supposed to, and that'll do it. We'll go to the bottom of the fourth. Burley has himself a three run lead. Twins history to have won multiple batting titles. And the duck in the reverse direction tells you Joe Maurer two, Tony Oliva three, and of course the all time leader, the great Rod Carew, seven batting titles. But Tony Oliva, had not he had the bad knees, would have been one of the great hitters of all time. Well, he was still right up there. Well, it's just for, his, for yeah. his era, for his, I mean, for his window playing in the big leagues, he was absolutely unbelievably. Respected by the rest of the league. He still shows up in a lot of games in Minnesota, and you can still see that he had a lot of problems with his legs. Yep. He's one of those guys that he just you couldn't figure out how to get him out. I mean, he was a great all speed hitter, but yet if you were a one pitch pitcher, he could turn a hundred mile an hour fastball around. But his days. MO was he would fight your fastball off till you gave him something off speed. Those were the days when that lineup that they had was just otherworldly. Or were they tough? Yep. That's out of play. Well, when we beat them in 67, and we won the pennant, we had to beat Minnesota on the last two days of the season. We had to beat Jim Cotton, Dean Chance. And we really were not the best physical team in that. Race. Minnesota was best. Detroit was second. And we were third. But we had Yastrzemski, who won the Triple Crown that year. That's hit down to first. Fair ball. Morneau sucks it up. And that's out number one. So Chris has walked and now grounded to first. Baker threw that ball inside, low and in. And got Chris to try to pull it. Which is really one of the few things you can do with a pitch in that area. And he hit it right at Morneau. Here's Alexei. Well, if he's driving the ball to right center field, it's just a matter of time until he starts pulling it with authority. Well, he got a hanging curveball and fouled it back. And then he came back with a fastball and he drilled it in the gap. The fact that he allowed the fastball to get to him and drill it instead of going out and getting it was the key. That's the whole key right there. You let the ball, you, he's got to let his strike zone come back to him. And boy, that's, you know, it's easy for us to sit up here and say that. <laughs> sure. And well, it's so tough to do when you're when you're in between. 
Well, that's all you where Josh is at right now. I've been I, I played nine years where he's at. It's, it's not it's not a whole bunch of fun. But sometimes you go up there and the ball looks like a beach ball. Doesn't matter what the pitcher throws, you're on it. And you're seemingly always 2 0 3 1. Two and two, the count. Well, when you're in a hot streak, it's just absolutely amazing how easy it is to hit major league pitching. And when you're in between, it's absolutely amazing how difficult it is to hit major league pitching. Because there's a little bowling book bounce to Creedy. Two gone. So it looks like that little. There's a little settling down going on in part of Scott Baker here. Well, we let him off the hook in the second inning, and hopefully that doesn't come back to haunt us because that's an inning could have easily turned into five or six runs. As it was, it turned into three. Hides over two. He's going out to left and then a big strikeout in the second with a couple of guys on second and third. Hits him on the fist right there, pops him up. Morneau now calls him off, and that's an easy one, two, three inning, and we're into the fifth. Mike Redmond will lead it off here in the top of the fifth. Three nothing good guys. Two run homer by Paul Canerco in the second. And of course with that home run by Polly, the Alex and Elias family will donate one hundred dollars to White Sox charities for every Sox homer hit throughout the course of the season. And that is off the glove of Fields. Redmond now makes the turn and he's going to go into second. So the lead off double. But that home run by Pauly, number 37, so $3,700 donated by Alex Nellius in loving memory of Ursula. When you're hitting close to 500 against any one pitcher, things like this happen. This one down the line, and Josh Fields got a glove on it, but couldn't keep it out of left field. So here's Carlos Gomez. Blocked nicely by AJ. That's a 
that's not going to get the job done, and that will not endear him to Ron Gardenhire. No, it will not. And tomorrow is Dog Day, presented by Hill Science Diet and Prescription Diet brand Pet Foods, along with VCA Animal Hospitals. Get your dog in game day shape. Visit PetFit.com and take the PetFit Challenge. Dog tickets are sold out. For regular game tickets, call 866-SOX-GAME or visit WhiteSox.com. No, sir. Young, young player like that who's scuffling. You're down three runs, fifth inning. Lead off double, you're the next hitter. Did not look like he even gave him an attempt to try to go to the right side. Rod Gardner talking about Gomez before the game said a very similar thing. He said he gets so keyed up in situations where he wants to come through so badly that he hasn't been able yet to harness his emotions. Consequently, he doesn't just relax and do the job that he needs to do. In that case, if you don't think you can hit it to the right side, then bunt it to third base. He's a terrific bunter. One and one to count to Punto. We're grounded out to Chris Getz. They've got a defensive shift on Nick Punto. They're playing him straight away in the infield, but they're playing him as an off field hitter. And Jermaine Dye is not overly deep in right field. Huge gap in left side. Well, we have a moment. We'll send out a big White Sox hello to Iton Altshuler. Some of his buddies, Shadi, Todd, Rob, Ben, Arthur, and Troy. We have a White Sox group on Facebook. And it's a big one. 6,500 members. That is substantial. And there's a base hit. There's a Punto little piranha single right there. Is they going to hold Redmond at third? Punto does a nice job of protecting this an inside out swing. That ball's inside. And he just takes it the other way just over the head of Paul. Now runners at the corners, but you've got a guy up who's pretty difficult to double in Denard Span. Although he's grounded into two of them this year, it has to pretty much be a one hop rocket right at Get. As that bunt going foul. One out runners at the corners. 3 4 and 0 for our Sox, 0 6 and 0 for their twins. And that's low and away. What you wouldn't mind seeing from Span is taking that ball away and hitting it right up the middle because Ramirez is playing him up the middle. And a 6 3 double play would be inviting. There we show you the defense. Trying to get it out there. Whereas he might do exactly what you're talking about. Two and one. Outfield short and around to the left. Big hack right there, so that evens accounted two. With Burley's control, you might want to try one more fastball, just a little couple inches higher and maybe just like four inches inside. More. Even if you go to three two, Burley still can make that good pitch. Snags it. And they turn it over. Even if he didn't, there's going to be what you said. That's exactly where he's going. <laughs> That's right. But they got him. <laughs> and they each other out. Halfway home. Three nothing shots.
It is absolutely fantastic, Chuck Meister. Wish you were here, buddy. We're going to have some beautiful weather for this homestand. There's plenty of seats available for final two games against Minnesota, and then Pittsburgh comes to town. First pitch to Josh Fields. Josh is 0 for 2. Grounded to short in the first, and he struck out to end the second. And the count 0 and 2. Come on, Josh. Let it come to you, buddy. Let it come to you. Don't try to make anything happen. Oxford Troops military sock drive is Sunday, May 24th. Bring new White Sox to any gate on Sunday, May 24th, to support our troops overseas. For tickets to the game, call 866 Sox Game or visit whitesox.com. Here's Jermaine. He is 0 for 2. Twice he has gone out to Gomez in center. The last time up, Gomez had to come in a long way. But he's got the speed to do it, and he did it. The ball high and deep to left field. Man goes back at the fence, looks up. You can put it on the board. Yes. Number nine for Jermaine, and it is four nothing. Was a towering drive to left field. The ball is carrying very well to left. And Jermaine has driven in his 21st run. And the Ford home run replay on a hanging breaking ball. And Baker finally hung one that he didn't get away with. Jermaine took it out. First pitch strike to Tommy. Jimmy has single, scored, and walked. And the count 0 and 2. And with that home run, once another big White Sox. Hello to Colin Walsh. Huge Sox fan. Rehabbing at Marion Joy Rehab in Wheaton. So Colin, get ready, buddy, and hope to see you at the ballpark real soon. Two down. Four strikeout for Baker. He has four strikeouts and he's thrown two home runs. And here was the first home run he threw back in the second inning with Tommy aboard to Pauly. Man to the right of that sign is an interesting look. Get off, the goal. off the corner. I'm not sure if it was a good look, but it was interesting. <laughs> what do you think that is? I, I know one thing. He's hungry. He's really enjoying himself. <laughs> There's this. Good eye. Two and zero. Oh. He hold him right here. 14. He got the catbird seat. And it's three and nothing. Now you can read really narrow that zone down if you want to. I used to love the 3-0 pitch. It meant I was one away from a walk. Because I certainly wasn't swinging the bat. Did you ever get the two strike take sign? Yes, there's ball <laughs> four. No, but I'm sure a lot of managers I had felt like it. My first at bat in the major leagues was against Dr. Steve Arlen. Remember Steve Arlen? No. Well, 
That's why, because he walked <laughs> me. <laughs> he went on to a short, inauspicious career. Actually, he was uh, the pitcher for a bit with San Diego, but I did draw a walk. And that was the highlight of my hitting that year. Here's AJ. He is single, scored, and popped a second. Well, I've seen several managers on free two counts to pitchers, give them the takes on it. And believe me, it was warranted. Well, many times they just don't want you to hit into a double play. They don't mind accepting one out, they just don't want two on one swing. Big rip by AJ. Probably the two worst hitting pitchers I have I've ever seen. Of course, this is obviously before the DH came in. And I mean, they were neck and neck. Dean Chance and Hank Aguirre. Hank Aguirre was awful. He's no longer with us, but that pitch in the dirt. Goes as another wild pitch for Baker. Yeah, Hank was, and Dean, I'm telling you what, they were helpless up there. And neither one of them really cared. Sean Hen. Listening up with the bullpen. Pick him up right here. Make that wild pitch hurt. Two out, two and one to count. And this outfield is really spread out. In front of that. AJ's balance looks to be a little bit off tonight. Boy, he started off that road trip. He was swinging the bat. He was in almost a perfect balance. Balance is so important. Well, I think when he has good balance, he'll drive the ball to left center and then you get it inside and he pulls that ball to right field or right center. Normally he's got very good play coverage. Little yeah, he's always had good play coverage, yep. but his balance, the thing that's what's kept him from. Reaching the potential. I, he still hadn't even scratched the surface for me as he makes his own hop right there. Does more no, and that'll retire the side. But the home run by Jermaine Dye will go to the sixth. It is 4 nothing. White Sox. to fit your needs. Watch local programming on demand. Comcast has a bundle for you. Call a call 1-888 for best TV. That's 1-888 for best TV. And four runs is a bundle tonight because it's something we didn't see a whole lot of on the road trip but Mark Burley is making it hold up and he's bidding to go six and one. Brendan Harris will lead it off. Harris, Maurer, and Morneau. 
to face our 30 year old softball. And that pitch is foul. Harris is fouled out to AJ. That was on an attempted bunch. And hit into a 4 6 3 double play. One of two double plays turned by our Sox tonight. Didn't get it. And didn't miss by much. It wasn't that far inside as Harris jumping out of the way would indicate. That ball hit hard right at Brian. He's there. 1 down. Brian's hit the ball very well tonight. Doesn't have anything to show for it, but he does give you a sense of comfort in center field. That's what I mentioned earlier. He has he's a 275 lifetime hitter against us and actually he's hit the ball better than that. He has hit the ball hard. He's barreled it up. He's looked like a solid offensive player swinging that stick against us. Now takes upstairs. He's over two with a couple of strikeouts. I don't think you see that very often. In fact he had fans seven times. Coming into this, even though he did have a late start, he missed a month. And the count two and a well, he's four now, four for 24 lifetime off mark. There's not a whole lot of guys that can say that head to head with Joe Mau. That ball hit deep in the left field, and it's out of here. The count got Burley right there. And that is number seven for Maurer. And it's a 4 1 ball game. It's a form Ford home run replay. And this time, Maurer took it to the one part of the ballpark that the wind is blowing. And he's shown more power this year. Well, it looks like he's got his hands more perpendicular to the ground. He drove that ball out of the ballpark. That was a line drive. As there's a strike to Morneau, who's 0 for 2. He's grounded to second. Something in this setup was a little bit different than last year. I think. His hands a little more direct, vertical. As that curveball hit in center field, Brian's got the bead and the ball. Two down. Here's Joe Creedy. Joe's going out to center, then he squibbed one right off the end of the bat. Just over the head of Canerco in the short right field for a base hit. That's in the left field. That'll stay in the ballpark. And then Lewis, but Joe Mowers, seventh home run. And after five and a half, it is 4 1 White Sox.
TV. It's the ultimate baseball experience featuring 100 out-of-market games per week live on your computer. For more details, visit WhiteSox.com where baseball is always on. And it's Sean Hen, and he comes in, and the reporters were asking Ron Gardner before the game, when are you going to use Hen? They said, when I need a left-hander who throws 95, and apparently that's now. It'll be our lower third of the order. Anderson gets and Ramirez. By an 0 for 2, but he's hit it hard twice. Once he just killed it. Just a bullet right to Creedy at third. Then he had a hard ground ball to Joe. Want to know the count. Get out of here. They won't. And Redmond almost overran it. Meanwhile, one out. That wind started to kick up, and it almost got back over the head of Mike Redmond. He's staying with it. He checks to see exactly where he is as far as the seats are concerned. And then falls over backwards, making the play. So here is Getz. Chris has walked and grounded to first. You got Creedy at the cut of the grass at third. You got Bow, and more no, I should say, even with the bag and off the line. And there's the bunt. Nobody covered. Well, what Redmond is saying is that the ball hit the bat after he bunted it. And now Gardner is coming out and saying the same thing. Now, I don't think Jeff Kellogg saw it, and the question is. And Jeff is telling him, okay, I'm going to get some help here, but you just relax for a bit. Well, we couldn't see it from up here. Well, that's exactly what he's going out to talk with Tim Timmons about. And we'll watch it again. Couldn't get a definitive... Well, they're calling now. They're saying that it did indeed hit the bat. I think it bounced up and hit the bat again because it didn't hit it when it was on the ground. Yeah, so if in fact it hit it right there, it hit him in the handle of the bat. Yeah, and Ozzy is saying the same thing. He's going, now, look, we know Jeff Kellogg didn't see it. He's probably saying two other guys did see it and they saw it. Let it hit the bat. Take another look at it. And I think Ozzy's probably saying, well, if you didn't see it and you were closer than any of those other guys, how in the world did they see it from 150 feet away? I don't blame either manager for no, arguing. But, and Ozzy's going to lose this, of course, because at least Jeff Kellogg did check with a couple of the other umps. And so Getz is going to come back. Well, now they're saying that he's out because it, they're saying it either hit, it hit him when he was in fair territory. By that last shot that we had, the ball came up behind the bat. So indeed, it could, could have hit him instead of, instead of the bat as anyway. There's two out, and here's Alexei. Now watch this one. Ball comes up behind the bat, and it looks like it could have got him in the arm. Could very well have. And the out goes to you, two unassisted. And last year made four appearances for San Diego. He walked nine and struck out nine and nine in the third inning. Ball hit hard. Creedy with a, another good play. Guns it over. Wow. Nothing wrong with Joe's arm. One, two, three inning for him. We'll go to the seventh. It is still Sox by three.
Outside gate two, the ballpark entrance there. Bring your own food or choose to have it catered by the White Sox. Book a White Sox tailgate party pad with discounted game tickets. Call 312-674-1000 today. Mike Kadire will lead it off for the Twins. Sox, four, Twinkies, one. As there's the strike. Kadire had an infield single, and he's also grounded to Canerco. Joe Creedy's had a terrific night defensively at third base. There's another strike. Well, I know one thing. That's throw right there. He had a little giddy up on it. <laughs> it, did. it did that. Two balls, two strikes. To the 30 year old Michael Kadai. Nice motion right there. And him way out in front. Good straight change. Almost got him to pop it up. Just barely able to stay alive. And here's another one. And that's a fair ball. Josh Fields just looking at it. So that'll be the leadoff double. And that's what happens when you fight off those good pitcher pitches. Stay alive. You, anything can happen. Well, Mark tried to double up the changeup. And unfortunately, this one, instead of being low and away, was on the inner half. He just drilled it down the line. Now, that was Rob Drake on the call. And the ball person having a tough time getting out of the way of it. That's the way I played the outfield. On skates? Having a tough time getting out of the way of it. <laughs> Bedman. One for two, a double. Lead off man is second. Now field around to the right. Big gap in left center. And the count even is at one. 26,696. And attendance. On a beautiful evening here in the beautiful city. Redmond, one for two, as I mentioned, he is 15 for 32 lifetime off Burley. That Thorne loosening up in the bullpen. This is the 90th pitch by Mark Burley. And another foul. Second. Nice block by AJ. So the count evens at two. That was a good block by Krasinski. He made certain that Kadire could not move up. Mark 22 and 13 lifetime against this ball club. And he has gone full. The 38 year old veteran, Mike Redmond. Josh, ball took a little bit of a funny bounce. And he puts it on him. Yeah, he did, he says. So the throw is off the mark, taking Canerco off the bag. Everybody's safe. And AJ is yelling down at Mark Wegner. And Ozzy's going to come out. He wants to talk with Wegner. A couple of calls have gone against the Sox. 
Josh Fields was more concerned with Kadire than he was with that throw. It looked like Paul got him. We'll have to take another look at it. See him take a look right at Kadire. He did miss him. Well, Paul absolutely had no reaction after he called him safe. Of course, we could not see it from up here, but by that reaction, it would be an indication that he did miss him. Now, we'll take another look at it, and you'll see that Redmond is able to angle his body away from the tag right there. So that'll bring up Carlos Gomez. And that will be an arrow on Josh. So runners at the corners, nobody out. Big hack. Gomez is lined hard to center and he is grounded to short. Fairly in trouble here in the top of the seventh inning. And the count very quickly 0 and 2. Earlier tonight, Carlos Gomez decided he was going to have a conversation with his bat. And he probably told it fly out to center first, then ground out to shortstop, and then hit into a double play or strikeout. He gone. Big strikeout right there. Up out of the zone. A.J. wanted it upstairs. Mark Burley got it there, and that's one of the better pitches he's thrown tonight. And A.J. is motioning to the infield to watch the bunt by Punto. Punto is one for two. Just poked a single over the head of Canerco, his last at bat. Well, back in 98 and 99, we had a pitcher for a brief time here. Used to talk to his arm. Did it answer him? Whatever, whatever it answered him, it was wrong. <laughs> who, who might that be? Todd Rizzo. Not a household word. No. Come on, arm. But he got here. Come on, arm. <laughs> We got to get this guy out of arm. <laughs> That's low. One out, runners at the corners. Alfield around to the right. Gap out there in left center. Close pitch, didn't get it. Three and one. I want to touch inside as AJ has to move his glove a little to his left. And that ball poked out into right field. Jermaine coming on. They're going to give it a shot. Here's the throw. Now they're going to go to second base. And that will take care of the inning. They do pick up a run, but we catch a break right there. He was going to score. And seventh inning stretch, it is 4 2 Sox.
Scotty Pies will lead it off here in the bottom of the seventh inning. Sox lead it four to two. That's up and in. Well, you'd like to see Hen, who's had control problems his entire career, have a few more here and walk Scotty Potts to lead off the inning. The 1 1. Grady was in. Two balls and a strike. Potts is going out to left. He has struck out swinging. That was on a curveball down and in, as you see. DJ Carrasco, and there's a guy that has gone underneath the radar. His ass back through the middle. Lead off man aboard here. But one reason our bullpen has been so strong this year is because of Juan Nieves right there. He has been under the radar. Well, you don't find many bullpen coaches who are terrific pitchers. And Juan was a terrific pitcher. Who was thrown no hitter. Yes. With Milwaukee before he hurt his arm. He was a his right. Terrific pitcher, a great guy, and has a respect of everybody out in that bullpen. So here's Josh. Josh is 0 for 3 tonight. Fakes the bunt, takes the ball. Outfield, same. For the most part, straight up and very much spread out. Pots with a good lead. And with a long set. Scott has a tremendous lead, and that's a one way lead. He's trying to induce Hen to show him his best move. This is our first look at him. Just got called up from the minor leagues. And they got him. That's over the first. And he can't hit over the second. Well, one thing about it is that you're going to see this more and more as the home runs are diminished to a degree. And the stolen base come back into bold into the game. You're going to see more and more guys who can run, especially now. Good throw right there gets him. Try to steal bases on right handed throwing first baseman. Now, when Frank was with us, Thomas, we had a lot of guys steal on Frank. They didn't steal on the pitcher, they didn't steal on the catcher. They we stole on the right handed throwing first baseman. We don't have to worry about that much with Paul Canerco because no. he's accurate and he has a very good arm. And that was a good move, but a lesson to all you youngsters, once you are picked off, don't get in a rundown. Just try to run as hard as you can. And if it is a right-hander, you can veer to your right a little bit and try to get in his throwing lane. That's what Scotty did. Just jabbed at that one. That career loosening up in the bullpen. I always wonder if Redmond can see. He's got that helmet down over his eyes most of the time. I know against us at the plate he can see. He can certainly see it. He Especially has worn against, us out. Against Mark Burley. So a big out. It's a real bad butt because you drop the head of the bat. When you drop the head of the bat, the ball will go straight up. And here's Jermaine. Jermaine is one for three, a homer. That coming back in the fifth inning, his ninth of the season. I'm going to walk him.
And the count's 3-0. Oh. So the intentional walk to die, and that'll bring up Tommy. Jimmy is one for two, a single, a walk, and a strikeout. We've had a couple of home runs tonight, and there are dodge drives of the game. First by Paul Canerco. This in the second inning, a two run shot. And in the fifth, Jermaine Dye came up, hit his ninth of the year. And so the fifth home run by Paul, the ninth by Jermaine. Those are our dodge drives of the game. John Hen, a big man. 6'4, 225 against Jim Tomey, a big man. And that's outside. Now field still spread out, and you get a nice gap out there in right center field. They will give you the gaps, this Minnesota defensive set. He's shown that to us all last year and through the first, this being the fourth game we had played this season. Checks it up, takes a strike. One and one to count to Tommy. Jimmy time for 13th all time with Mike Schmidt. 548 home runs. Just getting home, just tuning in. That ball is jumping to left field tonight. Watch out. Throw well, to He came close. Nice play by Nick Punto. That ball on the first base side of second. No chance to get Scotty Pods. And Punto did a nice job of knocking the ball down. That's just a daylight pickoff. That means if you can see the shortstop in between the runner and the bag, you turn and throw it. The hen didn't come close. And once again. What they're trying to do is shorten up the lead because what Punto wants to do. Is quickly move back to his position because he knows that Tommy hits a lot of ground balls. In that area. Punto. <laughs> well, he gave him the side for the inside him. move. Yeah. He said, why don't you try this? <laughs> Nothing else has worked. Try the inside move this time. Watch Punto. <laughs> oh, he'd already given it to him just prior to that. And then he says, yeah, that a boy. There you go. High. And foul. And souvenir time left side. Does it the chicken of the egg? Does it bother Tommy? Or does it bother him? Here's what the heads up shortstop do sometimes. They say, hey, give me the inside move. It's not gonna fool anybody, but there you go. <laughs> Another souvenir left side, probably the most animated shortstop I've ever seen. Is wearing number 13 down in that White Sox dugout. He was fun to watch. Saw a few pictures of Ozzy today during his playing days. 13 years with the White Sox. Yeah. I didn't know that he was here that long. Yeah, he was fun to watch. Played hard, played smart. Not afraid to get to get in anybody's face. Two and two the count. Ball 
Boston beats Toronto two to one at Fenway. That's up high. Good check right there from Jimmy. Cleveland leading Kansas City 5 2. That game in the top of the ninth at Kaufman Stadium. If Jimmy gets on, it won't be him facing Canerco. It's going to be Guerrero. It would be Guerrero facing him anyway. Payoff. Hey, oh, smoke. Fair ball. Thank you. A get me over breaking ball down into the corner. They're going to wave JD around. Here's the throw to the play. Safe. Sachs lead at 6 2. I love those 3 2 get me over breaking balls. So does Jim Tomey, who's now driven in 22. He drives this ball down the line, past Morneau, and then it's just a foot race. And Jermaine Dye, who has walked intentionally, scored all the way from first base. Tommy laces this ball. There's not a lot of room down there to get it by Morneau, but it's hit so hard that he can't get over to it. Good call by Jeff Cox as he's watching everything. And a good slide by Jermaine. He dives to the back part of the plate, away from the tag. And it's a four-run lead. So hand departs, and we'll be back. Matt Guerrero comes into this one for the 20th time, 1-0 ERA, 392. He inherits Jim Tomey at second base. It's six to two Sox. Well, these get me over curveballs don't work out real well. And Jimmy takes it right down the line and just ripped it by Morneau. Polly is one for one, a two-run homer and a couple of walks. 6 2 Sox on top. And that ball going away. There are the numbers on Greer. Left handers have done nothing with him. Right handers, not real good either. To center field. Gomez now fighting that win. And as the Blackhawks charge through the Western Conference final, stick with Comcast Sportsnet for the best coverage in town. Pre and post game shows, live game web chats, reaction from the stadium, and all the news and highlights in Sports Night. Your home for the best coverage of the Western Conference finals is Comcast Sportsnet, fans' best friend. Here's AJ. He's one for three, a single, a bullet back through the middle in the second inning, and he came around to score. I don't want to change a set of signs that 
they've been using. Or they may want to get that left hander down in that bullpen real quick. A few more tosses. In that 2 1 Boston victory over the Blue Jays, Talent, the loser, he pitched well, evidently, and Wakefield beat Toronto. Talent has thrown very well since coming out of the bullpen. I mean, he threw against us, and he's been very good since taking over. That ball gets away. So, Tony, yeah, Talent found himself. The proud possessor of a real good changeup. Well, I'm pretty sure what Redmond told Guerrier was look, you've got Anderson coming up. It's a righty righty advantage. Don't give Krasinski anything too good to hit. Sometimes that leads to a wild pitch. Jimmy scampers into third base. I'm not going to say it. He made it easily. All speed hit him out in front. Arnold will make the play, but the two run double by Big Jim Tomey. The 6 2 bagger, and the Sox lead it by four. All right, Chuck Garfine, thank you very much. That's too bad. Hawks go down 3 2. But coming Kevin back home. Just have to defend home ice That's and then it. steal one in Detroit as Matt Thornton comes into this one. Thornton at 1 and 1, ERA of fine 263 on for the 16th time. 13 and 2 thirds innings, 14 hits. He's fan 22, walked just seven, and he starts. With the top of the order. Denard Span takes ball one. He is two for three. Now Fields swung well around to the left. Gap in right center. Fields on the. He was at one. Brendan Harris on deck and Joe Maurer in the hole. And once again, a reminder weather is going to be good all week long. So make your plans to be with us here at US Cellular Field. Johnny Danks tomorrow night against Francisco Liriano. And a team you don't get a chance to see very much is coming to town. The Pittsburgh Pirates. Who've had some surprising pitching and going into tonight, they've won three games in a row. And the one-two pitch. And let's check out our Felco upcoming schedule. There you see. Just a brief 
Six game homestand and then it's on the road again. That been, Seems like you keep saying a brief homestand. Maybe. There's a 96 mile an hour fastball. Good hack at it by the 25 year old outfielder. But another job by Mark Burley. What new? Seven innings. Two runs. One earned. Eight hits. No walks. Three strikeouts. And the key no walks. If you're going to give up more hits than innings pitched, you best not walk anybody. And he didn't. And uncharacteristically, the Twins have made a couple of mistakes one on defense, one with base running. He walks lead off him. They throw a fastball by him. And Jeff Collard thought that was up and down. So here's Brendan Harris. He's 0 for 3 tonight. He's hit the ball hard twice. Takes first pitch strike. Gap out there in left center. Harris, as I mentioned, a 275 lifetime hitter against us. And has really hit the ball harder than that. Span just a decent lead. Take your time. All right. Rack him up. Third double play. Turned by the Sox. And a good solid throw by Matt Thornton. This ball came right back to him. The biggest part of this play is making sure you make a good solid throw. It's letter high and then it's easy after that. You're just not going to outrun the arm of Ramirez if you give him any throw at all that he can handle. Here's Maurer. He is one for three a homer his seventh coming opposite field. In the six. Take strike one. Now we're 26 years old. Last year at 328, nine homers, knocked in 85. He already has seven homers this year. Slices that one foul. So the count one and two. That's more like Joe's natural stroke. His natural stroke is to left center field. It's one of the reasons why he's always hit for a high average. He's never been what you would consider a powerful hitter, yet he probably has potential to hit 25 home runs. Two. Alexei, so he walks the leadoff hitter and then does a good job throwing the double play and getting Maurer to ground down. We'll go to the bottom of the eighth. Six two good guys.
Perfect for client entertainment, family parties, or a night out with friends. Provide first class service while enjoying White Sox baseball. Reserve a diamond suite today. Call 312 674 1000 or visit whitesox.com for more details. And Craig Breslow comes into the game. It's been Baker, Hen, Guerrero, and now Breslow. Sox have a four run lead late. Breslow at one and two. ERA a robust 675 on for the 17th time. Another guy who has pitched well against us. Now he's left handed. And the Twins got him off wavered from the Cleveland Indians. The Indians bullpen this year, they probably want him back. Last year, five. Check it, six appearances at a 1.80 ERA. But in his career, just in seven appearances, he's got a 1.42. Ryan 0 for 3, but he has just scalded it twice. There's a strike in the count, 2 and 1. Nice foul back. And out of play. Oakland beat Tampa Bay four to one down the Tropicana Field. He's got line brink loosening in the pen. As he gets him, so one out. Chris Getz has walked, rounded to first. And then tried to bunt the ball. The ball hit him out of the box and he was called out. So it'll be a two unassisted. We were talking earlier about Bert Blylev and former. There's the Dutchman. 23 years he pitched in the big leagues. Look at those numbers. And when you factor in how many strikeouts he had. I can't for the life of me figure out why he is not in the Hall of Fame. That's ridiculous. He had 3,701 strikeouts. He had 60 shutouts. And that's, I mean, for him not to be in the Hall of Fame, they ought to take half those guys out of there. 60 shutouts. 60. Wow. He had 4,970 innings. As there's a little topper. Harris has got him. Two down. He had 287 wins. And 60 shutouts. A cute story about when Santana was with the Twins. Santana left after eight. Had a shot going. So, Dutchman after the game went up to him and says, Johan, says, uh, what do you? You don't want to get a shutout? Well, and says, well, yeah, but he said, those shutouts are hard to come by. He said, when you pitched, did you have any? Question goes, <laughs> 60. <laughs> 60 shutouts. <laughs> Plus, I know he played on one world championship team. It was those dastardly pirates in 1979. But 23 years in pitching in the big leagues. One and one the count. Outfield spread out there deep. And that's foul back. Most to our right. And once again a reminder, Johnny Danks against Francisco Liriano tomorrow night. So make your plans to be with us at beautiful US Cellular Field. 
Then on Thursday, Bartola Cologne against Nick Blackburn. And tomorrow's game will be over WCIU if you can't make it. And then Thursdays will be right back here on Comcast Sports. As that ball hit high, deep, and foul. Right side is wrong shape. He threw him a changeup, and he had him just out in front of it. He released that ball that came in about 10 to 12 mile, mile an hour slower than the fastball, and Lexi knew it was foul. That was about a 54 footer. Scotty Pods on deck. Two balls, two strikes, two out. And Breslow once again is going to come in and have a nice inning against our guys. One, two, three. But we're into the ninth leading. Six, two. Sportsnet at 1230, Ozzy and our Sox wrap up the series with Joe Creedy and the Minnesota Twins. And at 7, the Cubs battle Albert Pujols and the St. Louis Cardinals. Don't miss a big rivalry doubleheader beginning Thursday at 1230, only on Comcast Sportsnet. Scott Linebrink on for Matt Thornton. First pitch to Morneau, taken for a strike. And line bring comes in at one and two ERA a fine two oh eight on for the 14th time there you look at the numbers. Except more trouble with the right handers than the lefties. And Justin fouls that pitch back in the count nothing and two that one just missed the LG skyline club. Now feel about equidistant. Swung around to the left, and that ball laced into the gap. Nobody's going to get that. One hops Harold Baines out there in left center. So the leadoff double. Morneau is really strong. This is a splitter that just comes up tumbling. It really acts like a hanging curveball when you can't get the splitter down. It just rolls in there, and hitters are able to measure it all the way. And Morneau roped that ball into left center. 
Just get the hitter. That's all. His run doesn't mean a dead gum thing. It's Joe Creedy. Joe is one for three. Had a little squibber right off the end of the bat. Takes first pitch strike. Kadir on deck. As Bobby Jenks getting ready. Ozzy doesn't want to take too many chances with this one. And he's on top of Creedy. Nothing in two. The Azaru. Trying to get things turned around. He gone. Big out. Now it's an old saying. Stone Pony, you're never as good as you look when you're winning, nor as bad as you look when you're losing. This is not a bad baseball team. This is a good team that's playing bad. And it's a team that's going to score a lot of runs, especially as things start to heat up. As I said, I said it yesterday, I'll say it again. I'm getting a lot of, I'm sure, text messages as you have. Especially from a lot of mine coming from Seattle for some reason. <laughs> yeah, I told him, I said, we're going to win this thing because we're going to have the best bullpen. And if we're healthy the last two months in that bullpen, whoever's the healthiest in the last two months is going to win this division. Kadir with a 1 1 count. Mike is two for three and then feels single and a double. But the one team that does scare me is this team we're playing right now, Minnesota. Well, Detroit cooled off the Texas Rangers. Texas playing good solid baseball. Detroit shut them out. Detroit's playing pretty good baseball right now. Yes, they are. Brian Pusher in the on deck circle. Pretty good pitch to hit right there. Up high, fouls it off. Six runs, seven hits, one error for our Sox. Two runs, nine hits, no errors for their twins. Sox with three in the second, one in the fifth, and a big two run double by Tommy in the seventh, which gave us that four run cushion. Minnesota with runs in the sixth and the seventh. Two and two the count. Gets able to grab that one. That was a hard hit ball. Could have easily wound up in right field. Save Scott line break a lot of problems with this one as Chris gets moving quickly to his left. Avoiding the debris. And he made the play. <laughs> he had to slide on. And then oh, that's all very get, get away from that hot dog wrapper. That will throw both of them the first. There's Bushing. Takes low and inside. Just off the corner. Jason Kubel in the on deck circle, and you don't want to see him. No, sir. And the count, two and two.
So the Sox break that losing streak. Come home on a beautiful, beautiful day for baseball in warm weather and beat the Minnesota Twins by a score of 62. And what another job by Mark Burley. Mark Burley is definitely the stopper of this team. Now we've got to get a couple of other pitchers throwing the ball well. The offense is going to come to life. And a big win.